we covered, of course, a lot of issues a short time ago when we yeah. did interviewed for the primary. But regarding your opponent, have you had any forums with her? Has there been any, have there been any joint appearances? Not yet. Um, I think, I'm trying to think if we've had any, we really haven't yet. Um, there's a few coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, Cobra is going to do one and the Wellington Chamber is doing one. Uh, those are the two that come to mind right away. Well, for our purposes, since uh, she is not here, what do you want to tell us about your opponent and how you think you present the better choice for voters? Um, you know, I think I, I've been working in this community for more than 20 years. Um, you know, I, I, I've got relationships across this county and across this district. Um, and, you know, I feel like I know this district and understand this process um, better. And, you know, which means I can hit the ground running on day one. It, you know, for me, it's a continuation of service. I, I, I've not only worked with Senator Nelson for 18 years, but locally been working in the community um, on behalf of a major healthcare company. Um, so, you know, I've, I've got the depth and breadth of experience that's needed to really start on day one. Do you know of any policy differences between you and Ms. Baxter? You know, we've really not um, gone head to head yet. Um, and based on what I can see, uh, you know, she's def she's a Republican. She's got much more conservative values. I would call myself a moderate Democrat who, you know, who's supported by the business community. Um, so, you know, looking forward to actually having a chance for her, her and I to, to, you know, really have a conversation so that we can understand, you know, so voters have a, have a chance to see what the differences are. The business community is very interested in the affordable housing issue and very interested in the referent in the uh, bond referendum. In fact, I believe I heard that the Economic Council had put together a million dollar pack or organization or fund to advocate for this across the county. You are not on the commission now. We spoke with Commissioner Weiss earlier today to get, try to get an idea of how this program would work. Do you support the bond issue and how in your mind would the commission have to implement it? I do support it. I do see a need for housing um, and affordable housing. I think affordability uh, in our county is probably the number one issue. And, you know, that starts with being able to afford to live where you work. Uh, you know, for me, the execution of that housing bond is really going to be key for me. Um, there's going to have to really be some guardrails in place that create um, clear transparency and accountability. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that those dollars are spent. You know, we maximize those dollars as best we can um, and that they're spent, you know, smartly, for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, the other piece of that that I'm really focused on is, you know, creating that that then frees up some of the programs that already exist um, to to focus on first time home buyers and neighborhood revitalization, because I think that's also a really key component in order to you know start to make Palm Beach County a little bit more affordable. So you don't you don't have an idea necessarily either of how, what the commission would do. It seems and Commissioner Weiss is telling that it would be a subsidy and you would uh, seek proposals. People could apply for money from this fund. Uh, is that so, is that what you know? So the way I understand it is that, yes, it would be a subsidy, but that um, savings must be passed on to the home buyer. Um, and. And, you know, as someone who sort of went through the um, shovel ready project time frame in the federal government, you know, I definitely, you know, there are projects out there, there are potential, um, you know, 
uh, projects out there that that honestly are being held up because um, it's too expensive to build, right? Um, I think you and I talked about last time how expensive it is to build affordable housing units in Belglade, um, in 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 Belglade, South Bay, Pahokee, and in, uh, in that whole region. Why? Because you have to demuck the land before you can even start. So so for someone to go in to build an affordable housing project, it, the cost is is already. Um, significant before you 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 lay the first brick, um, so or pour the first bit of concrete. So um, you know, I think these funds will help really make that housing accessible to more people in in you know places where they actually want to live. How do you think interest mortgage interest rates just hit six percent? Um, do you think there'll be a market for these homes? I hope so. I mean, I think for right now, uh, it, it's going to be, unfortunately, or, you know, fortunately, depending on your position, it's going to be a lot of rental units. Um, but I definitely want, you know, like I said, I want there to be first time home buyer, um, you know, opportunities to, 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 to be available. And I think, you know, this bond helps free those dollars up for, for things like that. But yes, it will affect it. It, it absolutely will. Is the affordability problem especially acute in your district? Do you know if it's any any less or more acute? Um, I think so. I mean, I mean, I think it's you know certainly it's more acute in the bigger cities. More acute. I think that's my English teacher would yell at me for saying that. Uh, but uh, it, in 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 my district where it's more of a family community, it's, it, it still exists. You know, there's still people who, who struggle to, to make ends meet in, in, in Loxahatchee, in the acreage and in Wellington, you know, in Royal Palm, uh, there, there are still families struggling here as well. And, 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 you know, kids right out of college who want to come home, teachers who want to be able to live, um, you know, close to the schools that they work in. Uh, and, you know, we need to make that affordability uh, more accessible. We, when we spoke the last time, the proposed GL land swap in the agricultural reserve area was due to come to the commission uh, and be decided before you would. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh oh, you froze, Randy. I'm going to give you a minute. Um, I, uh, I the one thing I can uh, I, I can add to that um, really really quickly while we're waiting for him to come back. Um, you said that as far as the uh, the geo homes uh, as far as that goes, you you wrote in your questionnaire that uh, you have concerns about the proposal that it goes against standing precedent, but that the water and environmental benefits uh, merit careful consideration. And then you wrote more specific details are needed in order to fully evaluate the proposal. What, can you be more specific about your more specific details? Like what, what exactly are you looking for in future proposals to make a decision? How the water project will be managed, right? I come, I, you know, my old hat is is in you know federal water policy, uh, working with the state and the feds on 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 managing water. And I know that a piece of county owned property, um, the county doesn't manage water, right? And um, and so you need now the water management district or the Indian Trail Improvement District to come in and help to manage that project. Now that project, in my opinion, has some significant beneficial ramifications on water and water policy, water water storage, water access um, for, for the county, not just for the district. Um, but I also know the politics of water. Um, and if you, and I, they have to work that out. We have to figure out, is the water management district gonna manage that property? Is the county gonna manage that property? Where, what is Indian Trail Improvements District role? That detail is key to the success um, of that piece of the project. And that is where I have my eye. That is the part of the project that has my interest. And until that's worked out, I, I won't be able to make a decision. If it's well, worked out, it, it's definitely going to be worth considering in my opinion. Yeah, but you know, the, the problem with that argument is that all of the groups that you would expect to be advocating and support and supporting water projects oppose this swap. 
Mm-hmm. They have, they have every, every, no, 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 no. Every single one. There is no, there is no support because they also be, they understand that there is no benefit to the agricultural reserve area for this. Not a bit. Even there, you know, all it means is more homes. It doesn't bring them anything, bring, bring the reserve anything. There's no water benefit to the agricultural reserve area. There are overall global, you know, for the state, for the county, for, for, for Everglades restoration, for water supply, there are huge benefits. And, and the folks that I saw at the county commission meeting fighting for the ag reserve, not the same people that I used to see, that I'm used to seeing talking about water, you know, going to water management district meetings, um, not the same advocates. And um, I don't, I don't disagree, right? We need to we need to respect the rules that are in place on the ag reserve. I grew. Listen, the the the, the GL um, um, proposed project is a mile from where I grew up, a mile from where my parents live. I understand that that the 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 local ramifications of and the and the impact that 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 will have in that area, and that that plays a part in in my decision but i want to see what if the water gets worked out and the county was right um to recommend uh you know to 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 say that that needed that piece needed to be worked out um and you know let's see if they get it worked out and they're able to come back at all but why don't you simply do the water project separately we don't own the land but there from what I from what I hear from conservation lawyers, you've got leverage over GL if you want to do that water project. And the only reason that GL is able to talk about building fewer units is if the county commission, not you, but a previous one, approved units for that site that they didn't need to approve. Another favor for GL homes. The the the, the problem here is that there the the agricultural reserve would be asked to somehow fix the affordable housing problem and the water problem with no benefit uh, to the agricultural reserve. In fact, it would be a precedent setting move that could allow more swaps like this. It just, it, the, 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 I think the water quality seems more like a dodge, you know? You, I just don't understand because they're, they're, if, these, if this project is so good, why aren't ever all these groups lining up and saying, yes, let's do it uh, and we're for this swap? Nobody's for this swap except GL. And, and, and people who live in my district, in the acreage, in Loxatchee Groves, in that part of the air, in, in that part of, of, of the county, they're in favor of it. And, and that is something I have to consider very seriously. Yeah, well, you're, you know, the, the, the incumbent who has endorsed you is a big supporter of this. Listen, and if I was on the dais uh, a couple of weeks ago and that came to a vote, I would have voted no. The details weren't there. Um, I would have voted yes to postpone because the details that I'm looking for are, are, are still to be seen. Okay. Uh, well, one point that Randy just, just brought up there um, that... The, 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 the precedent setting nature of this. Are you concerned regardless of whether or not this has, you know, net benefit for water and the environment, are you concerned with the, the precedent this would set in the Ag Reserve? Absolutely. I, um, take, that, I of, take that very seriously. Absolutely concerned about that precedent. What sort of uh, guardrails could you envision to ensure that this doesn't just open the door to all sorts of land swaps where developers get a hold of ag land for something outside the reserve that's, you know, land, but not land that's really going to be preserved or built on or anything. Right. It's definitely something I'd have to take a look at. I, you know, that, you know, I had to get a crash course in, in the ag reserve here in the last year while I'm, while I'm running and, you know, I'm still learning. Um, This is really um, an issue that I never, really delved into uh, on the federal side of things. And um, boy, there's politics everywhere. There's also no timetable or any, at this point, any requirement that GL would have to produce a reservoir that would be acceptable uh, and make. So look, I mean, 
And that's a concern too. Do, do you believe that they, do you think that they pulled it because they simply didn't have the votes? Um, I do. I, I, and, you know, and I also think that it, that the county was right. They, you know, I think this was like um, a plan to uh, let's, let's pass it and then we'll figure out the details later. Um, but the details on the water piece were too important to not have worked out. I, I know how complicated that is. Uh, that wasn't something that was going to get worked out in 60 days. Well, this proposal has been around in one form or another for what, six years, seven years? Yeah, I think it's been six years is, is how I understand it. I mean, look, I remember being at a, at a COBRA meeting the, the first time and being like, wow, I don't have to deal with that one. <laughs> and here I am. But as it, as, it, as it stands now, as it stands now, the the swap could give GL Homes anywhere from 500 to $750 million more in sale revenue, right? I hadn't, I hadn't so, seen that number, but. Well, compared to the price to the, the, the price of the homes in Indian trails would be around half a million. The price of the homes in, uh, you know, in the, in a reserve near Boca would be anywhere from one to 1. 1.5 million. So there's the math. Yeah. On another on another topic, um, the when we asked also this Commissioner Weiss, the county has much more revenue this year because of increased property values. Yet the tax rate uh, remained the same, which means that, or you know, roughly the same. I think right about the same. So people are going to be paying more. Uh, should the should the county in these times have done more to perhaps lower the tax rate? For people? I thought they did. They lowered the millage rate. They voted to lower a the millage rate. A tiny, a tiny amount, a significant because, but anyway, with, with your values going up, people are going to pay more anyway. So if yeah. there's more money coming in. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's similar to this current drought situation, right? Um, you never know when, you know, what's around the corner. Um, and, and I think we have to prepare for that. And, and we also have to consider this housing crisis. Um, you know, I would have voted to lower that mill the millage rate because I think it's the right thing to do given the cost of life. I mean, every, you know, everyone's number one concern right now is affordability and, and, and the state of the economy. Um, you know, I, I, I would have to have, you know, you know, better briefings as to whether or not I would have lowered it more. Okay. And talk about, uh, please, about Virginia Baker. Give us a give us a critique of her performance, please. You know, I think anyone who has led in the last three or four years with COVID and and with with the situation in housing was really faced with you know unprecedented um, challenges. And I think given the challenges, she's done a great job. Uh, do I always think that there's room for improvement? I do. I, I you know, if you want to know what one of my concerns are, one of my concerns is, 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 is over in the planning department. What can we do, you know, and, and it ties right into the into what's happening with regard to housing. Um, if we can move projects through faster, um, we can we can get these houses. You know, the, we can have more availability, more inventory available. And it feels like you know, I myself have you know worked on some things that had to work their way through the county, and it's it's no easy feat. Um, you know, so what can we do to 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 do do better in departments like that? Okay. Dan? Anything else? Yep. You know, most of my questions were were related to, to a lot of stuff we've covered. Uh, the you know the, the the GL Homes thing and the and especially the two hundred million dollar uh, affordable housing bond, which you know I I definitely would like to hear more about. Uh, you know, precisely how that is going to work. But I understand you're not on the commission yet, so <laughs> yeah, I, I too would like to know precisely how it's going to work. You know, in fact, in in prepping for my conversation with you all, I've been doing making some calls and asking around to understand. You know, like. Like, for example, I thought in full transparency, I thought that there would be some some 
that the that that the housing bond would also be helpful for individuals you know that there'd be access to maybe some first time home buyer grants and while it doesn't not in that bond there are programs that already exist at the county with regard to housing and housing affordability that frees up those dollars to do more in that kind of programming and that's the kind of thing that i i'd like to focus on i mean you know i the, the stories that you guys have done and the stories that are running out there about about um about universities having to put students in hotel rooms. I, I, that's a direct, you know, testament to where we are in, 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 in the housing market, right? If I remember when I was going to FAU, it was more expensive to live on campus than to rent an apartment off campus. It is now cheaper to live on campus than it is to find a place off campus. Um, and I think that that's, that's why you're seeing this. And, you know, and I think part of this affordable, um, you know, one of the things I'd like to look into a little further is how can we partner with some with with maybe even Palm Beach State or the universities in order to create some affordable housing around, um, you know, around our institutes of education. Because I have a conversation yesterday with the president of Palm Beach Atlantic. She's continuing to hire professors who come here and say, I can't afford to live here. I can't find a place to live. I'm going to take that job in South Carolina. Uh, it, it, it affects it affects us in more ways than we realize. Um, and that's that's really concerning to me. Well, and we're having this conversation on the 15th of September. Uh, the first ballots go out, I think, in about two weeks. And it would seem that by now, even though I know that the county can't, quote, advocate, right, for something on the ballot, that there would be, I guess, more in the way of, uh, to, to Dan's point, an informational campaign at least explaining it here's what it is and oh i wish i had my purse with me because i did i did go to something where the mayor spoke yesterday and with an informational you know pamphlet so i think that 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 informational effort is underway um you know where the community is going to see more by way of what how exactly it'll work and you know what it what it affects do you, uh, just one, uh, just one other quick thing. Uh, uh, do you think the commission waited too long to pass some kind of ordinance uh, giving uh, tenants more formal notice, longer notice, if they're going to lose their lease or have their rent increased? Um, yeah, I mean, they probably should have done that, you know, a couple of months ago. I, um, you know, I just, it, it's, it's, you know, caps on rent is is a little bit complicated because it's not the same for everyone. But at least expanding the notice is is the least we could do right so i'm glad i was glad to see i actually was at that commission meeting when it passed it just passed what last week i think this week yeah this week yeah okay that was i mean compared with this with the, the primary this is all i had to cover dan yeah it's good to see you guys right. Hope to talk to you How about does, does wells wells do you need anything i think he's just listening in oh okay Hi, Wells. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, thank you, you too. <laughs> um, all right. Well, on on that happy note, we will uh, we'll we'll conclude this. I suppose you know we we obviously we talked around the primaries as we mentioned earlier uh, in this conversation. So we have a lot of the information we need. Um, appreciate your time. Thank you well, so much. Thanks for all you do. Talk to you soon. All right. Good, Bye -bye. good luck to you. Thank you so much.